Sabah al-khair. Right now, I'm going to talk about a special category of verbs, which we call in Arabic kada wa akhwatiha, or kada and its sisters. This is a category of verbs that includes several synonyms, meaning either to be about to or on the verge of, to almost do something, to hope for, or that something happens, and also to start or to begin. Each of these categories has some synonyms, and I've included them all here. Some of them are very, very formal, or rather archaic, but I'm including them all here for the sake of thoroughness and completeness. When we're talking about Kada or one of its sisters in a sentence, we use the same terminology that we use with Kana and its sisters, or Inna and its sisters. We have separate videos on those. When we're talking about the subject of Kada or one of its sisters, we use Ism to refer to it, the subject of Kada. And when we're talking about the object, the predicate, the rest of the idea, we would refer to Khabar Kada. With Kada and its sisters, though, the Khabar is limited. With kana or inna, sometimes the khabar can be a noun, sometimes the khabar can be a prepositional phrase or a verb. With kada and its sisters, the khabar always needs to be a verb and it always needs to be a present tense verb, a fa'al mudara. So let's take a look at some examples. We have, as I said, three categories of kada wa akhwatiha. The first we call af'al al-muqaraba, which we might gloss in English as verbs of approaching. All of these verbs are synonymous and they mean to be almost about to do, to be on the verge of, some sense like that. So here is one example. Takad al-musafira. I forgot my dots. تغادر المدينة تكاد المسافرة تغادر المدينة So, مسافرة means traveler The traveler, the female traveler is about to leave the city would be one way we could translate that sentence With أفعال المقاربة sometimes we see أن before this second verb but it's not necessary, and in fact, a lot of the time, we don't see it at all. So here's another example. This is from a poem by Abu Muwas, where he says, Kada yaqturni dhikrul habib. So, the memory of my beloved, dhikrul habib, almost killed me, because I was missing that habib so very, very much. So in these examples, al-musafira, is our ism, the subject of takad, so it's conjugated for feminine, and then tughadir is our khabar. Needs to be a present tense verb, here's our present tense verb. Similarly, dhikrul habib, Abu Nuwais is a poet, so he can play with syntax a little bit, is our ism, and then yaktul or yaktulni is our khabar. Our second category is what we call af'al raja, which we might translate as verbs of hope or verbs of hoping. Um, you can think of these as meaning something along the lines of hopefully. The first two, asa and hara, are what we call jamid, meaning that they don't really conjugate for different subjects. They tend to say, stay the same, kind of like hopefully in English. We don't change hopefully depending on whether I'm the one who will hopefully be doing something or whether someone else will hopefully be doing something else. So here are a couple of examples. Here's an example taken from the Qur'an, from uh, Surah Al-Baqarah, and it reads in part, Asa an takrahu shay'an wa huwa khayrun lakum. Here, Asa means something more like perhaps. So perhaps it is possible to dislike or hate something and still it's good for you. God knows best. A more secular, profane example from a song. 
Asa Rabbi is the name of the song. Uh, Asa Rabbi yikhalik li'ayuni, meaning sort of hopefully or may God, may Rabbi, my Lord, leave you for my eyes. Sort of a term of endearment. May God preserve you and keep you. Ikhlawlaqa is our third fa'al raja, and it is wonderfully, delightfully strange. It's not a verb that you're going to see much in contemporary usage. It's actually a Form 12 verb, which typically learners of Arabic don't even study unless they're concerning themselves very deliberately with certain kinds of old classical texts. But we're including it just in case someone tries to argue that it doesn't exist. And ikhlawlaqa is not jamid, it does conjugate for its subject. So here we have two examples, both of them about raining. Ikhlawlaqa al-matar an yanzil. So hopefully, al-matar, the rain, will fall, will descend. Or, we could rephrase the same sentence to say ikhlawlaqat as-sahaba an tamtur. Hopefully, as-sahaba, the cloud, will rain down. It's a fun word, but we're unlikely to see it, as I say, in contemporary texts or contemporary speech unless we're studying Kadawakhwetya. Our final category. Oh, excuse me, before I go on. Here we typically have an after hara and ikhlawlaqa. Asa can have an or it can skip an as in this example, which is a little more colloquial, or this example, which from the Qur'an is very formal. Our final category of al ashur verbs of starting, or verbs of beginning, we might say, has a lot of synonyms, some of which we see fairly commonly, especially like bada'a and akhadha, or ja'la, qama, might be verbs that you already know, and many others that are a little more off the beaten path, we might say. But they all mean functionally about the same thing, to begin or to start doing something. And we see these verbs a lot, especially in narration of stories. So uh, if we were writing a story, we could say something like, Bada'a al-walad yabki. The boy began to cry, perhaps after he was confronted with this gigantic number of synonyms for the same thing. Notice that here we have bada, our verb, and we have al-walad, our ism, and then yabki, that present tense verb, which is our khabar, but we don't have n after it. With a lot of other verbs, we use n to connect separate verbal ideas, uridu an adhab ila al-bayt, but with all of these af'al shuru'a, we skip the n. We do not include it. Similarly, uh, if we wanted to have a lighter note and say, أخذت البنت تضحك The girl began to laugh. أخذ and بدأ are synonyms, but this one is conjugated feminine for bint. And again, we have an ism. And there we have a khabar of a present tense verb. But we don't have n here. Again, we have a lot of options here, and some of them you're not going to see. So focus on remembering, especially the lack of n in sentences like this for beginning, and on focusing on the more commonly used synonyms like kada, bada'a, akhada, those are words that we are actually likely to hear and that are very useful for narrating and for communicating our ideas.